lesson of the chapter. Woo! -hoo! And it's ooh, it's all about algebra. Doing a lot of algebra in this chapter. Lesson 1.12. Yeah. Well, let's get on to our topic. Our topic says that we're going to be grouping symbols. Cool symbols. Hmm, what kind of symbols? I wonder. Well. That's what that learning target, our essential question, is all about. Yes, it says, in what order must operations be evaluated to find a solution when there are parentheses within parentheses? Woo, did that just go flying over your head? Whoa, Frisbee, watch out. Okay, yes, it felt that way. But you know what? I'm not scared because I know I just need to do one thing to understand this question. That is... Unlock the problem. That's right, my friends. It's real world, baby. Real world. Real world. Now, it says that Mary's weekly allowance is $8, and David's weekly allowance is $5. Every week, they each spend $2 on lunch. Boy, that's a cheap place to have lunch, huh? Write a numerical expression to show how many weeks it will take them together to save enough money to buy a video game for $45. So let's go ahead and take this apart. It does say here, they're giving us some help. It says, underline Mary's weekly allowance and how much she spends. It also says, circle David's weekly allowance and how much he spends. So it looks like that she's spending here $8. I guess we could just underline that port. And then David's weekly allowance is $5. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm supposed to circle. Oops. Mr. Ward didn't follow directions. <laughs> okay. Now, well, let's go ahead and start to unlock this problem. It says use parentheses in brackets to write an expression. It says you can use parentheses and brackets to group operations that go together. Operations in parentheses and brackets are performed first. Okay, step one, write an expression to represent how much Mary and David save each week. And it says the question, how much money does Mary save each week? And it says, think. Each week, Mary gets $8 and spends $2. Okay, and I'm going to be writing an expression to show that. And I would show that going $8 minus $2. Okay, how much money does David save each week? Think, each week David gets $5 and spends $2. Okay, so that's just like the other one. We're just going to say $5 minus $2. Cool. So how much money do Mary and David save together each week? Well, if this is Mary here, we could say, we already have our parentheses, $8 minus $2. We're going to add because this is that all together here. So now we're going to just take those parentheses and say $5 minus $2. Okay, I don't know. That seems to make pretty much sense to me anyway. Step two. Write an expression to represent how many weeks it will take Mary and David to save enough money for the video game. Now, how many weeks will it take Mary and David to save enough money for a video game? Okay, that seems like I just said that twice. What is the question? The other one was a statement. It does say, think, I can use brackets to group operations a second time. $45 is divided by the total amount of money saved each week. Oh, so I see. So we could actually say $45 then, and we're going to divide that by the amount of money that both Mary and David uh, saved each week. So that would just be saying, okay, I'm going to put my $8 minus $2 plus $5 minus $2. I mean, wonder why is that, in this, why is it written this way? Well, because what we have is we have two different I want to use the words rate. That's sixth grade. But Mary's making a little bit more money than David. See? And because Mary's making a little bit more money than David, they're spending the same amount on lunch. So that means the amount of money that Mary's able to save every week is going to be a little bit more than David. But they're both agreeing they're going to take the money they save towards that video game. And that's why what we're trying to do is say, okay, I have two different kind of operations going on here. That's how I can use the parentheses and brackets by taking care of what's ha happening here first. Then eventually I can take my $45 and divide that quantity. Okay. And maybe that's what this math talk is about. Let me see. Explain why brackets are placed around the part of the expression that represents the amount of money Mary David save each week. Yes, I think I just explained that because it's not the same amount. You can look at that and say, well, $8 minus $2, you already know, is $6. That's not the same. 
David, he can only save $3 a week because he's only making five. That's why we put parentheses around each one of those expressions. I don't know. I hope that made some sense. Let's just continue on. Now, it looks like here we're going to a completely different problem. Oh, it's a gift for me. Oh, no, it's not. Mr. Wara, don't get so excited. Okay, evaluate expressions with grouping symbols. Okay, that was the name of the, the title of this lesson. So what's this all about? Grouping symbols. When evaluating an expression with different grouping symbols, like parentheses, brackets, and braces. Oh my goodness, you're going to learn all about that today, I guess. Perform the operation in the innermost set of grouping symbols first. Evaluating the expression from the inside out. When we look at this, that's what innermost means. Innermost means that whatever you have in the middle, we're going to start from the inside and we're going to slowly work our way outside. Okay, just like that. And I don't know why I'm drawing this. I don't know. It just looks really cool. Okay, anyway, that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be going from the inside out. The example says, Juan gets $6 for his weekly allowance and spends $4 of it. His sister, Tina, gets $7 for her weekly allowance and spends three dollars of it. Their mother's birthday is in four weeks. If they spend the same amount each week, how much money can they save together in that time to buy her a present? Okay, so this is just like our previous problem. It always is. They're allowing us to practice what we just learned. The thing that I notice is I notice that Juan gets this amount of money and I'm just going to underline that one and I'm going to underline Tina's. What I'm going to circle is the amount of money each of them spend of it. And as you can see, if you look at this, Juan makes $6, but he spends $4 of it. That's quite a bit. Compared to Tina, who makes $7, makes a little bit more than Juan. And look at she spends less of it. Okay, and they want to do it in four weeks. So it says write the expression using parentheses and brackets, and they've done that for us. See the $6 minus the $4, because the $4 is what's being spent, and so that's subtraction. And then we're adding because we're going to take the amount of money he saves with Tina. And with Tina, she has $7. And of course, she's spending $3 of it. And it's times four because, remember, we're shooting for four weeks. So now it does say, do the most innermost. So I'm going to go right into the middle. And here I have parentheses here. And I have brackets. I'm going to go into the innermost. So six minus four is going to be $2. So we have $2. Here's my plus sign. So $7 minus $3 is going to be $4. And now you can see all I have left here is a bracket. I just have to keep bringing that four down. He just keeps coming down. He doesn't do anything yet because we have to do the parentheses because of order of operations. Good old PEMDAS. So now $2 plus $4 is $6. So you can see four times six is going to be 24. And it's money because this is weeks times the amount of money together that they save each week so they could save $24. Now, I didn't read the rest of these. Oop. Perform the operations in the parentheses first. We did that. Next, perform the operations in the brackets. We did that. Then we multiplied. Oops, we did all those steps because it was just natural for us to do those. So, Juan and Tina will be able to save, and we already know now, $24 for their mother's birthday present. Very cool. Yay. All right, let's move on. Now it looks like mathematical practice too. It says connect symbols and words. So what if only Tina saves any money? Will this change the numerical expression? Explain. Uh, yes, it would change it, right? You guys would know the answer to that right away because you'd be thinking, well, yeah, if David's not helping to save money. Well, then, yeah, it's going to change what that expression looks like. Explain. Well, the big explanation is the actual expression we had was four times, and I'm just going to write it this way. Well, here's my bracket, and let's do it all like how it was initially. And first we had David's, which was the $6 a week minus the $4 he was spending. And then we're going to add that to the $7 that Tina was getting for her allowance, subtracting her $3. And I put my bracket. So how would it change this numerical expression? Well, this whole part here, the $6 minus the $4, that's no longer part of our numerical expression now. We could put a big X over it. There you go. Put that X over there. Ah! Yes, thank you very much. Wow, my video crew, they're doing quite a job back there. Now, that means that if we still had the four times a week, that our expression now would look like this. It would be four times, and then we could actually say 
the $7 minus the $3, this is what our expression would be now, which again would, we could solve that and that would be $4. And you can see the amount of money that Tina would be able to save would be $16. It is less because Dave is no longer in the equation. Cool. All right. Let's do try this. This is follow the order of operations. Okay. Oh my goodness. So now we have, so that you guys are clear, we have a little bit of vocabulary here. But here you guys know this is called a parenthesis. A single one is actually called a parenthesis, I guess, with an I. We tend to always say parentheses because you always have a pair of them. Now, the one that we already saw before here, this is called the bracket, okay? And then lastly, this is the one we didn't have before. This one's called a brace. And you wonder why all these different names, are they really, really different? They're different only in the way that they look, but the way that we use them uh, is similar because we're always going to the innermost, and this is the innermost here. So we're always gonna go way into the inside. So we don't even worry about that times three in here because we need to go way, 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 way in the inside. So we're gonna perform the operations in the parentheses as it states. So four times, and then we have three times three. It looks like they already did that. Five minus two is three. So we don't see that there. That's what that part was right there. The five minus two was right above there. Solve that. That gave us the three. And then that got rid of those parentheses. The parentheses just disappeared. So these disappeared. Okay, so now we can see why that is. I don't want you to be confused. Plus, so now we're going to do the other one. So we have two plus four. I actually prefer to have that step up here. So if I were to solve this on my own, like if I were taking a test, I'd want to have all my steps. It's just they didn't rewrite this one over here. That's what I would have done. Just me personally, okay? In my humble opinion. Okay, so two plus four is six. So that's going to bring the six right down here. It gets rid of those parentheses now. Oh, look it, they did it again. Oh my goodness, a video crew, I'm going to give you guys a raise, okay? Pizza is going to be on me. How about pepperoni, okay? Yeah, okay. So now I have six, and then I'm gonna multiply that by two. And you don't see that over here, but that's this two right over here. And I'm doing this really slow because I don't want you guys to get confused. There's a lot of numbers and a lot of symbols. That was those grouping symbols. Now we bring our four down. Remember how we talked about that four because it's multiplying? It just doesn't do anything right now because we have to deal with the parentheses. The next is gonna be the brackets and then the braces. So now the brackets we have is three times three. So you can see that comes right there. That's your nine. And then it says plus. Well, there's nothing over here, but you know that there's something over here. And then inside this bracket here, we have six times two, which we know is 12. And just like that, it gets rid of the brackets. So now the brackets are gone because what we did was we solved what was in the brackets here. We solved what was in the brackets there. So they're gone. The only thing we have left is braces, but they're next because we're working from the inside out. And so now we have four times. Now we have nine plus 12, which is simply 21. And 21 times four, that's kind of easy, four, eight, 84. What do you think, huh? You like this? You like it so much you want to do another one? Yeah, okay. Let's hear you scream. Yeah, okay. All right, now, it says 32 divided by, oh my goodness. To read a problem like this is really challenging because you'd have to say the product of three and two added by seven subtracted by, that'd be a hard one to read like in words when you represent numerical expressions. But anyway, we know how to solve this. What I'm going to do is just like I kind of suggested, I am going to rewrite the problem over here. So we're doing what's in the parentheses first. And here we have three times two, which is simply six. Six plus, and now I have my seven. The seven just comes straight on down. Now I'm subtracting. Look at the difference of six and four, which is two. And again, I have seven right over here. Okay, now I come down. Six plus seven is going to equal 13. That gets rid of my brackets over on that side. Now I have two brackets here, or a set of brackets. And I have seven, two plus seven, which is nine. Now the brackets are gone. And now I have braces, so I have to do 13 minus 9, 4. So now I have 32 divided by 4, which I can do because there's no more braces, parentheses, there isn't anything. And that's going to simply be 8, okay? And those were the steps there that I didn't read again because I just went on my way down. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right, my friends, it's, well, it's an end to another math video. I can't believe they just kind of cruise on by. It's so great that you guys come along, and I hope this video you found helpful. Please don't hesitate. Shoot me a comment. Hey, say hello. You know? And let me know how I'm doing. Anyway, my friends, like always, live long and prosper.